friends and colleagues who are sitting on the DAF and my dear students. This is a very important uh, seminar, very, very important uh, meeting. After Telangana has been constituted, myself and uh, Professor Kodan Ram and Hargopal have already addressed you know, a couple of meetings in Uthmani University and other places about, you know, what is the role of government in terms of uh, education. I request all of you good to give me permission to make my presentation in English. I think I'm one of those people who know, believe it is very, very important that students should become familiar with this uh, international language, and I think it's important. A lot of knowledge is in English uh, today. Professor Google, Uncle Google is also in English. Internet is in English, so I think it's important. I'll just take, take about five minutes to make my presentation. I think for any country, for any nation, it is very, very important. Education is a priority. If you see in terms of you know, any kind of a modernization which has taken place anywhere in the world, in modern societies, education has been a top priority. Unfortunately, in this country, education has never been a priority. Now we are going through elections. And I was read you know, several manifestos earlier of you know, various political parties in terms of manifestos. Education does not become a priority. About, about 10 years ago, when UK went for elections, their agenda was education, quality education, and excellence in education. They had a three-point agenda. That was the, in a country like United Kingdom. So unfortunately, in this country, we do not play, uh, we do not place that kind of importance for education. That's where, you know, when we look at, as several of my colleagues, you know, have said, in terms of nature of investment, you know, which are, we are making in education is very, very low. If you look at, you know, the nature of uh, higher education invest investment, you know, the last uh, 10 years or 15 years, it's been just, you know, 1.8%, 1. 1. higher education budget. Historically, several committees, several commissions, you know, which have been constituted, including the Kotari Commission report, and several other kinds of reports, you know, which have been constituted in this country, said minimum we need to invest 6% in higher education. A country like India, because we are a young nation. There is no country in the world, you know, which is as young as India. My dear friends, the whole world is looking to India now. The entire world is looking to India. Canada wants, you know, qualified people. America wants, you know, skill-based people. Australia wants, you know, people. New Zealand wants people. Several countries in Saudi Arabia and many of them are look, looking for skilled knowledge. Because we are a young nation. 50% of our population is below 25. 50% of our population is below 25 years of age. No country in the world has that kind of a young population, that kind of a human capital. If you look at you know, a country like in a country like America, America's population is only 22 million. We are producing 22 million every year in India. 22 million we are producing every year in India. Canada's population is about just 35 million. 35 million. America's population is just about 320 million people. We are 1,400 million people. We have overtaken China in the last you know, five years. India's population has grown that rapidly. That is where education becomes very, very important. Human capital becomes very, very important. Human resource development becomes very important. If you are not going to be investing in school education, in primary education, vocational education, technical education, or higher education, it will be very, very difficult this country to become a modern country. We cannot. What is the value of education? Why education? Education is for empowerment of people. Education is to provide leadership. Education is to provide rationality of mind, scientific temper, reasoning, logic. That is the role of a university. What is the role of the university is to develop you know, curiosity among young people, to think rationally, logically, logically. That is to develop you know, that kind of a scientific temper. Scientific temper, particularly in a country like India, where modernity and tradition are you know, growing simultaneously, it is very, very important that universities play that kind of a role in terms of giving that kind of a temperament. And when we look at you know, in the context of India, when you look at it, you know, we have almost about you know, 1,100 universities in India. 
there are 70,000 colleges in India. 70,000 colleges in India. There was a policy which was constituted when Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister. He did not call it, you know, Education Commission. He called it Knowledge Commission. Because, you know, knowledge is power. Information is power. When the Knowledge Commission was constituted, they said, you know, India by 2015 needs to have about, you know, 2,000 universities in India. That was the recommendation of the Knowledge Commission. 2,000 universities in India. We only have about 11,000 universities in India. 11,000 universities in India and then about 70,000 colleges, which is totally inadequate. I also would like to make you know, one point. If there is any country in the world where inequality is built into higher education, it is India. Nowhere in the world that kind of an inequality exists in higher education. We have central universities, we have institutions of national importance, we have state universities, we have private universities, we have deemed universities, we, I call them as the deemed uni doomed universities, we do not know what is happening in these universities. And if you implement you no know, knowledge, national education policy, there is going to be another major disaster in this country. They are talking about entry of foreign universities in India. Entry of foreign universities in India. Rajya Sabha has already amendment, brought about an amendment to the constitution. Lok Sabha has not yet approved, you know, perhaps, you know, when this government 2024, unfortunately, BJP comes to power, they will implement the policy of getting, you know, foreign universities in this country. And when you look at, you know, the context of India, when you look at, you know, the enrollment ratio, gross enrollment ratio in this country, is only about, you know, 27% in the age group of 18 to 23 are in colleges and universities. Only just about 27% you know, of India's population in the age group of 18 to 23 are in colleges and universities. When you take you know, a country like Canada, 100%. When you take a country like Australia, 100%. America, 98% of people who are in the age group of 18 to 23 are in colleges and universities. And when you take again you know, this 27%, the na nature of gross enrollment ratio of women is only about you know, 17 to 20%, which would mean 80% of the women in this country who are in the age group of 18 to 23 do not have access to education. I am talking about simple access. Forget about the quality of education. Several of my colleagues you know, spoke about you know, the quality of education. And NASCOM recently submitted a report. One of the national bodies have submitted a report saying that 80% of the graduates who are passing out from universities and colleges are unemployable. They do not have knowledge, they do not have schools, someone, they do not have skills. Someone referred to about school education, that is the situation. A seventh class student, eighth class student cannot even read uh, a third class textbook. But so in the scenario, the higher education is also equally bad. 80% of them you know, are unemployable, they do not have. So in that kind of a context, you know, when we talk about, you know, this seminar is focusing on quality. How do we go about, you know, ensuring quality? Quality means we need to have good colleges and good universities, good infrastructure, good teachers, recruitments have to take place regularly. All over the country in terms of education, when we see, is very, very disturbing. Disturbing. In several universities and colleges, almost about, you know, 60 to 70 percent of the Posts are vacant. Telangana is worse. Myself and Professor Kodan Ram and Hargopal you know, were part of the university. In 1975-76, when we were teaching in Usmani University, the number of faculty was 1,100. The budgeted post of Usmani University is about closer to 1,300. And that was the kind of faculty we had in 70s, 60s and 80s. But now, if you look at, you know, as a case study of Usmani, the number of teachers, you know, are teaching are only about, you know, 350 or so permanent teachers. Then, you know, we have got, you know, this contract system, part-time and guest faculty, which is obnoxious, which we cannot have in a university system. In a university system. How are we going to be having? In 1975, there were only two disciplines. Now, you know, when you look at, you know, Usmani University has got, you know, nanosciences, nanotechnology, Biotechnology, these courses were not there at that time. Artificial intelligence, robotics, many, many courses have been established. But then, do they have quality? What is the nature of syllabus we have? When you are talking about quality of education all over the country, particularly in Telangana, we need to have recruitment, we need to have infrastructure, we need to have good hostels, we need to have good buildings, we need to recruit people regularly, identify talent, revise our syllabus. Knowledge is not changing by the day. Knowledge is changing by the hour. Technology is changing by the hour. 
leapfrogging in terms of technology. Look at you know what's happening in the field of artificial intelligence, machine learning, machine translation. It's important that our students should get exposed to this modern knowledge, modern technology, modern technology. So that is only possible, you know, provided you know, we go about you know, investing in higher education, which we have not been doing. If you look at you know, Telangana, in the last you know, 10 years, you know, I have the details with me. Nature of investment they were making in higher education, the budget allocation was 3% and then you know, they released only 1%. Budget allocation in Telangana for the last 10 years you know, has been about 3% for higher education, but the amount you know, which is released was only 1%. How can universities survive? How can universities have you know, quality education? Quality education. I was principal of Arts College, as someone has mentioned, 93 to 95 percent of the students are coming in you know, a marginalized section, scheduled class, scheduled types and backward classes. And they need to get you know, quality education. Quality education. Telangana itself, in terms of its demographic profile, is quite different. 93 percent of the population in Telangana are scheduled class, scheduled tribes, minorities and backward classes. Among the 28 states, this kind of a profile is not there. That's where the Telangana came. We thought you know, when Telangana comes, you know, we'll have you know, excellent universities, outstanding universities, quality education will be there, quality schools will be there, quality infrastructure will be there. Unfortunately, for the last 10 years, the entire system has been completely destroyed. And that is where the challenge comes in. That is where the you know, challenge comes in. Let me also make you know, one or two points about you know, when you are talking about you know, the national education policy. There are several state governments which are not implementing national education policy. National education policy has been rejected by Karnataka, rejected by Tamil Nadu, rejected by Kerala, Andhra Pradesh is partially implementing it. We have not yet taken a decision whether we should implement national education policy. If you closely read the national education policy, they are talking about you know, commercialization of education, privatization of education in a big way. And also communalization of education, they are talking about in a big way, in the name of Indian knowledge system. In the, in the name of Indian knowledge system, you know, they are talking about you know, interest in courses in astrology, not astronomy, numerology, Vedic mathematics, Vedic sciences. They want to get in on the Manuspriti. They want to amend the Indian constitution. These kind of disturbing developments are taking place. That is where you know, these kind of becomes, you know, meetings become very crucial. In a democracy, all of us have a role to play. We have to set an agenda. Civil society like us, having meetings like this, we have to set an education agenda, social agenda, political agenda, economic agenda. That's why, you know, we have, you know, these kind of, these kind of uh, meetings. So, yeah. So, what is that, you know, we need to do? When we look at the government, government has issued a manifesto. But then, you know, we also have a role to play in terms of, you know, trying to set this agenda. What should we say from forums like this? 15% of the budget should be invested in education. That should be our demand in Telangana. But they are promised in the manifesto. Right now, you know, in the, in the, uh, the voter account budget, you know, that is not very clear. That talks about, you no know, 68%. That is totally inadequate. Because several of them, you know, in this country, marginalized sections, you know, do not have access to quality education. So, what is our demand? 15% of the budget should be invested in education. Number two, they cannot, we cannot establish private universities in Telangana. And the private universities which have been established should also be abolished. If the government has got the political will. Because there is no quality education taking place in these private universities. They are totally commercial in character. They don't have any kind of a quality. They don't have quality vice chancellor. We do not know what's happening in their private universities. That should be our... And then, you know, recruitment in all universities should take place. The budgeted post. Usmania University is having 1,300 posts. Kakadiya University is having 400 posts. The 13 other universities are having, you know, several posts, you know, vacant. Complete recruitment has to take place. It does not cost, you know, in terms of, you know, much high budget. Investment in... Investment is, you know... Investment in human, human capital so that you know, we'll get opportunity to not only to work here, we can work you know, anywhere in the world. Though so then, what is important, my data shows, in some of the colleges, in some of the universities in Telangana, for the last you know, six, seven years, they have not even had you know, any meeting to modernize their curriculum, modernize their syllabus. They have not. The same old syllabus which existed you know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, we are teaching. Syllabus has to be updated. Syllabus should be modern. Syllabus, you know, we need to get 
when the context of knowledge is growing so much enormously all over the world. New ideology, new scientific thought, new technological innovation which is taking place. Incidentally, when you are talking about the key word today all over the world is innovation. Innovation in technology, innovation in teaching, innovation in thinking. That is, the, that is what it should happen. That's where you know, we need to have that kind of a syllabus. We need to have good infrastructure, quality means, good recruitment, good teachers, good vice chancellor, good infrastructure, good syllabus. We have to bring about you know, reform in terms of you know, what kind of an examination system we need to have, how do we judge our students. All these factors are very, very important for us. And then lastly, when you're talking about Telangana, education becomes you know, much more crucial. 80 lakh population of Telangana is in the age group of 18 to 23. Young population is there. 80 lakh population is there. And then, you know, there are also other kinds of population which is, you know, in the age group of 3 to 18. All of them should go to good colleges, good schools, good universities, good universities. Government has a role. State has a responsibility. If the state does not have a responsibility in terms of education and health, why have a state? Why have a state? State should be accountable to the people. Then we can also privatize the state. And I'm sure you know, all of us will play a role. And several of us who you know, are sitting on the dais you know, have you know, some kind of a role to play in terms of enlightening the government, educating the government, that the kind of a damage which has taken place in the last 10-15 you know, years has to be restored. So that you know, all the children of Telangana, this 80 lakh population and younger population would go to good schools, good colleges and good, uni good universities. Without you know, human capital development, Telangana cannot progress. Investment in human capital is very, very important. Let's hope you know, we will try to set that kind of an agenda in having you know, meetings of this nature so that you know, Telangana should become a, a model for the rest of the country in terms of school education, higher education. Is that possible? Of course it is possible. There are a you know, lot of committed people in this part of the region to bring about you know, that kind of a quality in education, both school education, primary education and higher education. Hoping that you know, we set you know, that kind of a educational agenda for better excellence and quality in education, we will have to com continuously fight. And then, you know, role like this, meeting like this will help in terms of setting an education agenda for our youth of this region. Thank you very much.